episode of Cafe Con Cas. I am so excited to be here. It's been um, a few months. There's a lot that I have been up to since my last episode. For those who are tuning in for the first time, welcome. This is Cafe Con Cas. Cafe Con Cas is a show that brings dialogue alive on healing, arts, and diversity with occasional special guests. Um, tonight is very, very special because I have a returning guest, Lama Rod Owens, who was on my show last year, January 2016. Uh, we talked about his journey to Buddhism and also um, into um, a form of ministry that incorporates his Buddhist practice and also his real life experience. Oh, Rod Owens. Yay. Thank you so much. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> joy, joy. Oh my gosh, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Yes. 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 You, yeah. You've you've had a book come out since I, I last spoke to you. I How have. and some talks surrounded by those books. Yeah. And, uh, excuse me, some talks around your book. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've been up to lately? Yeah, like Radical Dharma, Talking Grace, Liberation, and Love. Mm -hmm. um, it was in progress the last time I was here, last January. Yeah. So we released it. It was uh, came out in June of last summer. Um, right in time, right on time for the occupation. Um, and so we kind of look at the text as this really great manual to help like work with the current political crisis mm. we're experiencing now. So Dar Radical Dharma, I co-authored it with my um, co-writers, the Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams and Dr. Yasmin Saidula. Um, and it's a conversation around race and love, you yeah. know, and held within the context of Buddhism. How have, uh, in what ways, like what kind of populations have you connected to through mm -hmm. um, speaking about your book? I also understand that there's mm -hmm. a radical Dharma group that has yes. um, also come about. So yeah. do you, are you just dealing with Buddhist practitioners? Mm -hmm. Are you dealing with um, queer youth, curious people of color, everyone in between? What has your audience been like? Everyone. Um, of course it hit in Buddhist communities, but it's actually expanding out wow. to queer communities, activist communities, to anyone who's like actually looking for strategies mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. to deal with like the sense of like overwhelming anxiety and trauma, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of like being in the world mm -hmm. and stepping outside of your door. Yeah. You know, so anyone who's interested in that, I think this book is really useful. Something that I love, we talked about the last episode, mm -hmm. um, speaking of anger, <laughs> say with the happy speak of anger, ah! uh. to be like, ah! speaking of anger, grr, fuck, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, yes. so speaking of anger, yes, yes, yes. just had to come out, that's so yes. yes. hard, be angry. <laughs> So embodying emotions yes. um, is really critical yes. um, to healing and radical change mm -hmm. is what I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. also what I loved about our conversation last, um, we were talking, you were talking about your experiences with depression mm -hmm. and we were also talked about um, anger as an emotion mm -hmm. and having some space from anger mm -hmm. and understanding how anger can be a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really powerful that you brought that up during your conversation and it's something mm -hmm. that is still... I think um, for me, in my own um, sense of justice and yeah. healing, I've had to come to terms with my anger and also kind of be in communion with her, mm -hmm. you know, at any mm -hmm. moment. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of the conflict that we're experiencing today, or a lot of the disconnect I see, is that people can't even tolerate, mm -hmm. you know, you have like movements like people can't even tolerate the state that we're in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what happens, what, what are your thoughts about the mm -hmm. current state of America? Like how would you describe this, this Trump era mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the people you've been conversing with? Mm -hmm. I think it's like different for different groups of people. Mm -hmm. I think for white people, it's like the end of the world. Yeah. And I think for non-white folks and marginalized communities, it's like, oh, this is business as usual. <laughs> yeah. This is what America does. Yeah. You know, this kind of like, whiteness, this white supremacy, this kind of like overvaluing of this like capitalist system, mm -hmm. you know, all of that is like, it's not a secret yeah. to many marginalized communities, yeah. you know? Um, and so what a lot of communities of color are having to do is not only hold space for ourselves, but having to hold space for our white counterparts mm -hmm. now, you know, who actually don't have the capacity mm -hmm right now, you know, mm -hmm. to handle this kind of like trauma, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of like fragility, mm -hmm. you know, um, with a lot of white folks right now, you exactly. know, and so again, like this, this kind of liberatory struggle is once again on the backs of marginalized communities, mm -hmm. you know, I also feel like, you know, something that comes to mind is like, as you're doing this work, 
you know, we talk about Buddhism, mm -hmm. um, you know, you think of Buddhism in a popular context, understandings of compassion, mm -hmm. nonviolence. Right. When do you get to a point in your work, mm -hmm. um, especially dealing with this white fragility mm -hmm. or even just in your own work of like, sometimes you just have to say, wait a second, that's just enough. Yes. Like, how do you, how do you keep the balance between that yes. community work yeah. and like a sense of self? Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a really deep understanding of what your work is, mm -hmm. you know? So my work is not to do the emotional labor mm -hmm. for white folks. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, instead create spaces and provide strategies and tools for not only white folks but for all people mm -hmm. to empower themselves to do the work um, mm -hmm. of liberation within their own experience mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i think the problem comes when we're having we feel compelled to do the work yeah. on behalf of other people and that's actually really violent because we take away the opportunity for people to learn mm. from their own experience mm. you know and they actually don't progress at all yeah you know we have to do our own work we yeah. have to be with our own anger we have to recognize our anger give it a lot of space mm -hmm. to be there mm -hmm. and then look beneath the anger to understand that the anger is actually trying to show us where we are hurt mm. you know so anger and hurt or woundedness always come in a pair. Hmm. Hmm. You know, they're always together. And I think we get really tricked because anger can be this really powerful, overwhelming right. experience. And, right. we, and we think, oh, it's really powerful. And I can draw from that source of power. Mm -hmm. And I can like be a superhero right. in, the, in the community. When right. in fact, what's happening is that anger is actually deeply depleting us. Hmm. You know, because it's actually not meant to be used in that way. It's actually meant to be an indicator of where our hurt is, and then we mm. bring our awareness down into where the hurt, and we hold mm. space where the hurt. That's where our power comes from. Mm. You know, is that 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 um that ability to be with our own hurt, to learn from it, mm. and to be more tender and more open in the world. Mm. You mentioned something really interesting because I, you know, you mentioned this hurt, but you also mentioned violence. Mm -hmm. um, and in my experience, mm -hmm. I'm I've been trying to expand to people this concept of what is violence and yeah. where does it happen. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of reflecting um, a violence among among women yeah. to re receiving, giving. I also think of violence towards the self, yes. right? Because I mm -hmm. sometimes people some people ask me a question, mm -hmm. you know, how how you know how do you maintain a sense of heart through certain you know traumas mm -hmm. yeah. or certain? Mm -hmm. And I think well for me, a manifestation mm -hmm. of that depression just felt like violence turned inward, mm -hmm. and it was this fog. So mm -hmm. do you find, like, when mm -hmm. you talk about violence, are you in spaces that have expanded the boundaries of that meaning, mm -hmm. or are you contributing to that expansion? Because mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not in spaces that often where people, you know, people think of violence in a very specific way, yes. mm -hmm. but also how, you know, there's also other definitions of violence, which yeah. are personal towards the self, you know, domestic, mm -hmm. international. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a lot of definitions mm -hmm. of that. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I definitely feel as if I am expanding how we understand violence by exposing the nuances and the subtleties mm. of violence. You know, I look at violence as as harm, as impact. You know, I look at how we're being hurt, you know, and often the most intense kinds of violence we experience is the violence we do to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I know. And and so and that's Whew. People, yeah, people yeah. don't want to go there. Can we, you, can, did you hear it, that? Like the violence know? that we account like we do against ourselves, yeah. that's very that's a hard place to go. Yeah. That's a hard place to go. It's a hard place to go, and it's Sunday night, and we're going to have church, and we're going to, like, have real talk. <laughs> you know, it's like the people yes. who are, you know, enacting the most harm in the world are doing even far worse harm yeah. for themselves. Yeah. Or they were born into a context, or they were informed by a context that really taught them to be really violent with yeah. themselves. And that's really... So much of the circumstances many of us struggle with. Yeah. We're just coming, we're born into families, we're born in communities, and we have these circumstances, mm -hmm. and we do the best that we can. Mm -hmm. Adolescent development is really tricky. There can be any any kind of, of force or anything that can interrupt like a balanced, healthy adolescent mm -hmm. development. And mm -hmm. it's really fragile. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're all like struggling to manage these adaptations, you know, from trauma mm -hmm. that we've incurred as we've grown up. And some people do well with it, some people not so much. Right, right, know? right. So when I see people like, yeah. just really like out of control, like I just say, okay, there's at some point you weren't loved. 
Hmm. You know, or at some point, at some like point I need to do that. yeah. You know, yeah. and I yeah, and I want to bring that kind of empathy and yeah. also that kind of compassion to my relationships with people, um, wow. especially with people that I'm hurt by. Yeah. You know, and I just want to like just bring yeah. that awareness and say like you're probably doing the best that you can right, right. now. You right. know, and yes, it's creating this really negative impact, but I want to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. But as I acknowledge that, I also want to create boundaries for me. That's, 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 um, that's self, that's, uh, self actualization 201, yeah. I would say. <laughs> I think at the beginning, um, it's so powerful that you say that because yeah. in, uh, recently I've been exploring, exploring boundaries, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in positive settings yeah. in settings where people are receptive to them. Mm -hmm. So the stakes are almost higher on myself mm -hmm. because I'm not acting out of defense, but I'm acting from a really genuine place yes. of asking like, okay, this person is here. How does this feel? Uh, you need to go here a little bit yeah. and I need to yeah. actually not blame myself for asking you to go yes. there. So that's part of where that conversation mm -hmm that conversation goes a little bit awry mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's back to, back to myself and also mm -hmm. understanding, you know, like how to have those, those boundaries. Yeah. Um, do you find that your boundary work, it's really interesting because I listened to you and I think, um, for those of you who uh, are new to Buddhism mm -hmm. or I, I, for me, my interpretation and also my experience and study has been mm -hmm. having that, um, creating that mindfulness mm -hmm. and creating that relationship of observation mm -hmm. um, and also mm -hmm. understanding within all the realms of emotional mm -hmm. states. You can have learning, mm -hmm. you could have enlightenment, you mm -hmm. can have different states. Mm -hmm. um, do you find your boundary work is rooted in Buddhism or also, or comes from another place? And if so, can you kind of relate it for those who mm -hmm. um, may not have a direct experience of mm -hmm. Buddhism right. just yet? Right. Well, I think I was so initially so informed by my work and community change, you know, mm -hmm. as coming up as an activist, as um, uh, a direct service person, as an activist, as an advocate, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I picked up a lot of skills around, like, what does it mean to be in the world and to to try to create these these kinds of safeties mm -hmm. so I can do the work, mm -hmm. you know? So, but when I came into Buddhism, Buddhism actually helped me to be aware, mm. that, to develop actually a deeper awareness of what, um, what boundaries were, mm -hmm. you know? And how boundaries were actually these things that we erect because we feel out of control, mm, mm, mm. you know? So what does that mean? Well, mm -hmm. basically yeah, so if I'm like, in a relationship, hmm. you know, and I'm going to say something that's going to hurt you, therefore I'm out of control, hmm. you know, hmm. like for me being out of control is being in a space where I can hurt people or hurt myself. Okay. Okay. You know? wow. So when I feel okay. myself in that space, I create a boundary. I say, I have to refrain. Hmm. I have to walk away. I can't talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Or I can't engage in this activity that I'm seeing self-harm developing from. Yeah. You know? So I put that boundary up and I put that boundary up with a specific promise. Hmm. And that promise is I'm doing this only because I need space to practice. Oh, wow. With being okay. out of control. I'm, all, I'm doing this. I just, I want to repeat that. I'm doing this only for space to practice. Yeah. That's so powerful. Yeah. Because hmm. if I really love, if this relates to another person. If I really love this person, yeah. then this boundary is a way that keeps me from hurting this person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not yeah. saying something, not doing something, not developing a resentment, mm -hmm. you know, but I think a lot of people go to the boundaries and say, I'm just going to put this up and walk away and forget you. Hmm. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And that's violence. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> you right. Know? Right. You right. know, and, 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 and I want to like actually discern that a little bit more and, okay. and say that, yes, there are people like we have had experiences and we have to put up boundaries to stay safe. Mm, okay. But in that safety, I think we have to do the work of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, okay. so, we so have not to... just existing in the separation, yeah. which as I listen to you mm -hmm. relates, it, it's, it, re it, it so much relates to the state of society. Yeah. Um, like, so how, how could I be doing this work mm -hmm. and I'm on the train yeah. and then I'm next to someone who isn't doing the work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. has prejudice Yes. and then you clash mm -hmm. and you're, you, you know, it's like, how does that also, how do those nuances also take place in a society where, where mm -hmm. I, I almost don't like the word using divided. Cause yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm sure, no, you're doing so divided. good. 
gonna, how about yeah. this? How yeah. about this? Right. How about in a space where you are, you have your brothers and sisters, yeah. American brothers and sisters mm -hmm. with horse blinders. Let's yes. try that. Yeah, okay. Right? Because mm -hmm. that's, that's tunnel vision. That's like, my oppression exists in this space. Mm -hmm. I'm being, you know, I'm going to be oppressed if you call me racist. Yes. And then you're next to someone who is being oppressed in the context yeah. of being a black man on the train. Like, yeah. how does, do you have those experiences within mm -hmm. your day-to-day -day life where mm -hmm. that separation and mindfulness is challenging mm -hmm. and then you're confronted by someone else's crap yeah which is violent yeah right mm -hmm. so how what are some ways that you mm -hmm. navigate through that or you know it's yeah what are some ways that you can mm -hmm. that you navigate through that i think there are so many ways to do this mm -hmm. and i think also want to like say on the onset that you know because we see stuff happening it doesn't mean that we have to be a part of fixing it or addressing it <sighs> You know, so like, it's so like, good. I like, yeah, yeah I see so stuff happening all the time. And I ask myself, yes. wait, is this my work? Yes. To step in and to intervene. Number one, number no. one is, is, is this my work? No. Is this my work? And I see, like, if you're talking about, like, I don't know, like, an instance where people are blind to oppression, yeah. you know, and, and I want to like you specifically, it can be any, it can be racial oppression, it can be gender, right. it can be ableism, it can be a sexuality. lot of sexuality, all kinds. So if you're occupying an identity of privilege, yeah. you know, I want people who are occupying, occupying this identity of privilege and who are woke around that mm -hmm. to step forward and to do the work of holding other people in that same privilege accountable. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, because it's people will listen more to people who are similar mm. to them. That's you know? so it's I so I'm getting this um, beautiful visual visual of like concentric circles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are the ways that we overlap? What are the ways mm -hmm. that we come together? And what other identities and portions of society um, do each of us mm -hmm. individually have, right? Mm -hmm. So in, so I'm thinking for me, as you're talking, I'm like, all right, um, I want to open up more dialogue among white Latinos. Yes. I, I, I have to, I, I've done the work of in supporting mm -hmm. other movements, mm -hmm. also speaking, reclaiming my ancestors, yes. something that, all right, we're going to have to have Lama Rob back on <laughs> to talk about ancestor yes. work. Um, mm -hmm. We have more things to talk about, but this is just the beginning of a yeah. new season um, of Café con Gas. Um, but it's so powerful because I think mm -hmm. of while you're talking, I'm also thinking of your experience, mm -hmm. how, it how we can overlap yes. with each other. But then also, what mm -hmm. are the areas that, mm -hmm. that I need to work on? And to do so uh, with compassion in a way that doesn't mm -hmm. practice, um, mm -hmm. that we're not um, causing violence to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really yeah. powerful and that's like well not just powerful but it's um, how do you say it like awe-inspiring you know yeah. like the kind of joy that you have the tears of joy because yeah. it's just like mm -hmm. it's so good yeah. you mm -hmm. know so mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah we have about um, two minutes left oh, no, a minute sure. I know I have my two quick I just sat down I know uh, quick quick we, I book you next we, this is ridiculous we you just got here we haven't figured out the liberation we're yet we're expanding <laughs> time I know I, I have the whole plan for the like for the revolution. Oh, we didn't get so, to it. So let's let's call this let's call this part one. So let's let's do this. All right. Um, I would love to have you back on the Café Go Gas to do Absolutely. another dialogue. Um, so we're we're gonna talk about liberation. Um, but before we leave, I think the the um for those watching on YouTube or here, mm -hmm. we're talking. I got Facebook. I'm trying different Facebook. things. Let's let's talk here for a second. Facebook, thanks for watching. Um, so I'll I think I want to leave you with this note. Um, let's just leave it with the intention yeah. of um, being kinder to ourselves and addressing the violence against um, ourselves mm -hmm. in our journey towards right. um, liberation mm -hmm. and um, so we can uh, create something something beautiful. Absolutely. Um, so thank you, Lama Rod. Mm -hmm. And visit LamaRodOwens.com. Lama Rod. Lama like. Rod. Excuse mm -hmm. me. LamaRod.com um, for more information um, and so where to find um, Rod locally in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. You gave a lot of talks. Just mm -hmm. gave a talk at the Humanist Hub today. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. Yeah and for um, just bringing your reflections. Mm -hmm. And I think we just need another episode to talk about next steps, yeah. future visions. Cause I, I'm sure you have an idea of what you want this all to look like. Yeah, I do, okay. I do, I do. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to leave it with a cliffhanger. <laughs> I'm getting, 
<laughs> Remember the cliffhanger, um, and you know we'll we'll be doing more episodes that talk about um, what liberation looks like yes. on a practical, real time level um, mm-hmm. here in 2017. Um, so yeah, thank you, and have a great night. Thank you.